Hello everybody, thank you for joining me. This is Happy Plate. Today we are going to eat all this delicious food. We'll make two happy plates and a happy bowl. I am joined here with some other hungry friends who are going to help me eat all this delicious food. So while we eat, we are actually going to talk about some interesting weird history and I'm gonna introduce you to Dr. Robert Liston, AKA the fastest knife in the West. Before we get started, we jump into the story. Let's talk about what we're eating. Rodeo burger. What's on it? Lily, why don't you tell what's on it? Bacon and onion rings. And barbecue sauce? And yeah. barbecue sauce, yes. Okay. Just our plain quesadilla here, right? Yeah. And then we have a flatbread pizza. It's the Tuscan. So there's chicken, tomato with pesto, and then a pulled pork um, nachos, which did they forget our pork? <laughs> it's Wait, just regular nachos. No, there's pork. Okay. Well, hopefully there is. You guys want to start eating first, and then I'll tell yeah. you a little bit about Dr. Let's Liston. Get our food. Or we'll, we'll get food, and then I'll kind of give you a little brief introduction. Um, so Dr. Liston was a surgeon. He was most well-known for his amputations. Should I do four? Yeah even though there's three of us. Mm -hmm. You know what, Lily, you can have that corner because you really like bacon. <laughs> he was known to be able to cut off like a lower leg in 30 seconds or less. His unsuccessful cases is what he's most known for. So I'll tell you some of those, but um, let's just plate this first because I'm so hungry. <laughs> I'll give you this one. Okay. Okay, so do you... Get out of here, Oh, <laughs> mine's is hungry. Hans is so always Chief, hungry. Him. Chief is always hungry. Really? You go away. Most eating go shows, away. people eat a whole bunch of food themselves, but do you see how nice I am? <laughs> I share my food. <laughs> One of my cats may jump into the picture. Oof. I apologize. They, they like a lot of attention. And they really like food, so. Lily, because I love you. Mm. Oh my god, the pork is so Look at this piece of bacon. Here you go. Pork is delicious. Oh, that. you guys didn't get any fries. Oh, thank mm -hmm. God they didn't forget the pork. Oh my gosh. My trying to be They layered it too. They did it the right way. Before we get further into our story, I'm just gonna take a quick bite because I really need to eat. How is it, you guys? Good. Mm hmm I don't think I got bacon or onion rings, though. So. Mmm. Really? Mm. I think I got all the onion rings you didn't get. Mmm. Mmm. Mmm, the burger's really good. Isn't it? Mm. I like that they didn't do too mm. much barbecue sauce in the burger. Mmm, does not overpower. Mmm, mm. mm. this is so good. Mm. Oh, mm mm. Okay, Mom's just trying to steal my food already. I knew it wasn't gonna take long. Did you guys try the pizza? Not yet. Mm. No, not that one either. Mmm, mmm. I feel like that combo of like tomato, mozzarella, and basil is like one of the best ever. Something like a pizza and make you feel like you're eating healthy? <laughs> yeah, I guess pizza. so. How are the fries? Mm. They look seasoned. Mm -hmm. I don't really like really potato y fries. You know? Mm. Thin and crispy. Mm. Mm -hmm. I'm trying the quesadilla. But you can't have a quesadilla without like Salsa. the fixings, I feel like. Right? Mm -hmm. Too bad we didn't have guac. Mm. Mm. <laughs> I've been waiting all day for this. <laughs> Seriously. But we didn't know we were going to get this. But Until very I was waiting day. all day to eat a big meal. When we were plating this, we dropped a french fry on the floor in the kitchen. And Chief, my one of my cats, which you'll probably see in a little bit, <laughs> grabbed it with his teeth and <laughs> ran away and started growling at his brother. It's the most ferocious I've ever seen him. Do you guys like the way the burger's cooked? Mm -hmm. I actually really like the burger. I think it's my favorite. The burger? Mm. Yeah, it's really good. Actually, I haven't tried the nachos. Hold on. The nachos with the, with the pork, pork is so good. Good news, everyone. We did get pork. <laughs> 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 
Mmm. <laughs> this is good. Okay, so Robert Liston. He was born in Scotland in 1794. So this is like a long time ago we're talking about. He um, was the son of the town minister in this little village. He was six years old when his mom died, so his dad raised him. Super smart kid. He started at the University of Edinburgh. You know, I really hate saying Ed Edinburgh, because it's like Edinburgh. Like, uh. Oh. <laughs> anyway, so, um, so he started college at 14 years old. <laughs> Two years later, he started training in the medical field. So he started medical school, right? So at 16 years old. By the time he was 20, he was a practicing surgeon in um, in Scotland at the Royal Infirmary and then by the time he was 22 he went to London um, to the Royal College of Surgeons he was working as a surgeon eventually became a professor too and he stayed there until until he died let's talk about some of the good that he did so early 19th century like imagine you stub your toe right and you cut it and then like Two weeks later, you have this crazy infection, and then the infection's like going up your ankle, up your leg, and mm -hmm. either need to cut it off or you're gonna die, right? Mm -hmm. <laughs> you go see Dr. Robert Liston because he is the fastest one that can cut off your leg, save your life. If you think about early 19th century, this was before we had anesthesia. Right, yeah. So the faster you can cut off someone's leg, the better because <laughs> the less blood you're gonna have and then you think about infection too because this was before like antibiotics and be this was actually before they were practiced like washing their hands in the OR so you want to go see him because from first incision until the very last stitch it took him 30 seconds he was and he was like so cocky it was to the point where it legit like he would walk in ready for his surgery and he would throw like a pocket watch at the um, the spectators remember back then they had like mm -hmm. the rooms with it was like a theater. Yep. Walk and, boxes. Yeah, exactly. It was like a, it was like stadium seating. Right. So he would throw a pocket watch and he'd say, time you gentlemen, like he's known for saying that. And they would actually time him. So the faster that you can have an amputation done, the less risk of dying. So I think back then it was like one in four people would die if you had to have an amputation. And his numbers, I actually read different resources and some said one in six and some said one in 10. Either way. So like people will go to, to hospitals and infirmaries and they'd get turned away because it was too risky and then they'd go to Dr. Liston because he would at least he say yes. Care. Yeah. yeah, he would say yes. He actually changed the way they were doing amputations back then. So like, you know, picture, say this is like you, get, you have to remove a limb and they would just cut it off. But he was actually the one who thought, you know what, we need like a skin flap in order mm. to cover the end of the nub to prevent infection, infection, right? A good way to picture this, like not to brag, I feel like I have like the same train of thought as him. When you eat a burrito, <laughs> when you think of this, you get a big burrito, right? And it's wrapped in tin foil, right? Mm -hmm. And usually this is what people do. You go, you take the tin foil down and you go like this and you unwrap it, right? Yep. So half yep. of it's showing and then you eat it, but it catches all the juice at the bottom. Mm -hmm. So when I eat a burrito, this is what I do. I open it you gently, I fold the foil down, eat my burrito down, and if I wanna save it, now I have a foil Skin flap. flap. <laughs> <laughs> I take my foil flap and I fold it down and now I have proper storage to eat my burrito later. He, it, he kinda came up with that idea of doing the amputation in the shape of a U, so you have the skin flap to fold down, suture up, maybe fold up, I don't know. But he also, because of that, invented the double edge knife. So it was like straight, like serrated on both sides. So he would be able to cut kind of back and forth. Yeah. And then he also invented <laughs> the locking forceps. Forceps. Forceps, yeah. yeah. So to control like arterial bleeding and everything. Imagine how painful. So he invented be. that and that's still used in the OR today. Yeah. Like that's pretty good for 18 early 1800s you know yeah. another thing that he did was and this this is gonna shock you but he washed his hands before washing your hands was cool like, <laughs> they did not wash their hands before they performed sur surgery back then walk in and like roll up their sleeves put on their apron and have at it <laughs> but hold on it gets better <laughs> their aprons they didn't wash them so when they, they would they would do a full surgery right just think like blood and guts and like other bodily 
fluids. Probably not. I'm eating. Oh yeah, we're eating. <laughs> Sorry. They would perform a surgery and then that would be it. Then the next day they'd go do their surgery. They put the same apron back on. They didn't wash it. And it was almost like back then you'd have, they'd have like layers of blood, like dried blood crusted on their apron. And, and it was like, it was like a flex. <laughs> how much blood you had on it? Yeah, okay. they'd be layers? like, look at all my, like my bloody apron. Look at all my work. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. They'd be like, you check know, it out. Look how many surgeries I did this month. <laughs> did they use butchers as assistants back then too? They actually had medical assist medical students as assistants. Do you want the oh. burger? Mm -hmm. I share. <laughs> oh, look at that bacon. He had medical students. Actually, I'll talk about that a little bit too, but I don't know, maybe butchers too. Who knows? They did some crazy stuff back then. Yeah. I'm gonna take a bite of my food. All this talking. Remember the barbecue place that we went to, Lily? The best nachos I've ever had. Thank you. I think it was haunted. Yeah. Seriously? Yeah. That building was so old. Didn't you feel the spirits? It's actually decked out for Christmas too and it was so pretty, but yeah, there was ghosts there too. What's that? Pig piece of pork, yeah. Yeah. Um, do you mind getting me a drink? <laughs> <laughs> I just said I'd get you. I know. Thank what you. What is it? Actually, it was a mimosa. <laughs> oh, is that what you want to get? <laughs> sure. Mm -hmm. I'll take that juice that's on the counter with a little splash of something, something. <laughs> They're going crazy. So, um, this one is. <laughs> <laughs> Just go by color. This is this is Chief, the gray one. This is Monza, the black one. <laughs> you say your finger. I'm not bleeding. <laughs> I'm fine. Kamsahamnida. Mm hmm. <laughs> Where did we leave off? We're talking about how awesome he was in the OR. Mm -hmm. He was a trendsetter, right? Mm -hmm. We talked about his dirty apron yeah, his and his dirty cool aprons. U shape and his <laughs> locking and his... forceps that he invented. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So that's all good stuff. What else did he do that was good? So he. He had students, you said. He did have students, yep. Um, actually, one of his students, what was his name? Joseph Lister. After studying under him, he went on to invent all kinds of like um, antiseptic. Like procedures Listerine? and stuff. I know that was the first thing I thought too. Did he I make was like, Listerine? They must have named Listerine after him. Did he make it? I don't know. I don't think so. He was like the person who paved the way for like antiseptic procedures. So anyway, he was like a really big, abrasive guy. He was like six foot two, which is I feel like really tall for back then. <laughs> 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 but he was like kind of argumentative, because he could be like he was. He was like the best back then, yeah. and he was so smart. He would like denounce certain procedures. So like one thing was like, you know the little, you, your uvula, you know like the hangy ball mm -hmm. in the back of your throat? There were doctors that were like cutting those out, thinking it would, <laughs> it would like fix a stammer. <laughs> I'm like, sometimes my brain just works faster than my mouth can move. Yeah. Like I don't want anyone taking that. I think we're getting a little carried away talking about our little hangy balls. <laughs> Moving on. Just to kind of paint the picture of his ethics and his um, his morality. You okay? <laughs> <laughs> There's this other crazy thing that happened, which we could totally go into like a whole nother story. Maybe we'll save it for another episode. But there was this doctor named um, Dr. Robert Knox. So this was a time when in the UK, they were, the government was like cracking down on crime and because of that and the harsher punishment people were not getting murdered as much professors who were using human bodies for like anatomy classes and stuff like dr knox um they were coming up short with bodies to work on and, and to to teach students with so these two guys who were besties both named william um william burke and william hare so these two guys, they were best friends, and they ran an inn, they started killing people, and then they would sell the body because they were in need of money. So they would sell the bodies to Dr. Knox, who would then take it to his classroom, and they would, um, him and his students would cut the bodies open and have a little class. Well, Dr. Liston, he actually grew suspicious of Dr. Knox, and one day he just like barged into his lab. He saw a body that he recognized, and it was the body of this girl named Mary Peterson. So she was a girl from town who was missing for a little while. Long story short, 
he barged in, saw the body, supposedly he punched him out, knocked him to the ground, and he took Mary Peterson's body and um, he, you know, he brought it to the authorities so for a proper burial. So that's another story more good stuff. I, I'm trying to just tell you all the good stuff so people will have more respect for him because now we're gonna get into the bad stuff. But first, I'm gonna eat some more food. And it's not really bad, it's actually just his and unsuccessful stories. And many other doctors had many more unsuccessful stories. Exactly. At least he was saving lives and saying yes. And teaching people to wash their hands. Yeah, <laughs> it's huge. You know what else he did? He was actually shaving, like, sites, you know, like they shave the hair. Mm -hmm. And that's actually, um, helps prevent infection too. And he was doing that before anybody else was too. I felt like that would have been a good, like, ASMR bite. Mm -hmm. I should have got closer to the mic. One more bite. Before I talk again. Mmm. I already ate so much. Can you guys see Chief? Yep. Can you? Mm hmm Little bugger. Are you guys ready to hear his unsuccessful stories? Yes. Because these are good. There was one time he went to amputate someone's leg and he was moving so fast, he cut off his testicles. <laughs> <laughs> That's like a minor one, but yeah. So, I mean, which is understandable. Like, he was making his, like, buddies time him, so he had a lot of pressure. Yeah, I get it. Sometimes things get in the way. Think about it. Like, he had to have, like, his medical students, like, physically hold people down. Yeah. Oh, you know what? Actually, I forgot to tell you one more thing. One more good thing. He actually completed the very first surgery with the patient. I guess you could say it wasn't anesthesia, but with the patient under. Mm -hmm. So, actually, in the Boston area, here in the States, there was someone, a dentist, who was using um, ether mm -hmm. to do like dental what, like procedures and stuff. And he had known about it, so he was like, let's give it a shot. So he had like one of his doctor buddies um, hold like a cloth, <laughs> a cloth to one of his patient's Poor face. Boy. And the guy went under, and he's so fast. So 30 seconds later, he had the leg cut off, and he had the whole, like it, it sutured up. And then waited a few minutes, kind of, you know, talking with his buddies and waving to the crowd and everyone that was watching him. And like a few minutes later, he woke up and he actually asked him like, when are you gonna begin? Cause he had no idea what was oh, going on. Yeah. And like everyone, like the whole, the stadium or whatever it is, it was stadium she seating. So. Yeah, they were all started laughing. So it was like a show. He was like a performer. So they're all chanting, listen. Yeah, listen. <laughs> yeah, he was like a superstar. Clappers. <laughs> Remember these good things. Crazy that. He cut off someone's testicles during. Yeah, a well, leg I'm starting with like so. the light ones and I'm working my way to like the big ones. Okay. <laughs> so, testicles, gone. Okay. Another one. A little boy came to his infirmary and he had like a massive um, mass, like a big tumor type thing on his neck. Mm -hmm. And Dr. Liston, he was just convinced that it was um, just an abscess that needed to be lanced. So, he just. Like sliced it, throats? thinking it was gonna drain, and it was actually an incredibly large aneurysm. <gasps> and he sliced so it, and the kid bled oh out and just god. died. Oh my god! That's horrible. <laughs> I know. What would they have done I mean, for that back then, anyway? Yeah, would have bled and bled and bled. Yeah, yeah, an aneurysm. I don't know. Here's the good one. Are you ready for this? This is like iconic. This is what he's the most well known for, right? Okay. So he did a leg amputation and he was moving so fast that while he was cutting the leg, he took a couple fingers off of one of his assistants and then whipped the saw back. And while like switching tools, he cut the tails off of a coat of a spectator who was so scared, he dropped to the floor in shock and died of, <laughs> di he died of a heart attack. And then the the assistant who lost his fingers died of infection, and then the patient died of infection. Oh. It was the only surgery in history to have a 300% mortality rate. <laughs> wow. <laughs> so that's why he's so well known for it, because it's like iconic. Wow. Do they teach people about him now? 
I would imagine, I would imagine yeah. they would, especially if you're any type of like, if you're in the OR or yeah. who knows. So he was like an incredible teacher. And again, like he invented tools that are still used in the OR today. So mm. like, let's give it to him. Yeah. He deserves it. 30 yeah. seconds, like what can you do in 30 seconds? Why? Brilliant surgeon for his time. He, he still worked at that, um, the same place in London as a professor until he was, he was 53 actually when he died and it, of um, a ruptured aortic aneurysm. So anyway, that was the life of Dr. Robert Liston. Thank you for joining us and listening. I haven't quite made a happy plate yet, so I'm gonna finish eating my food. Yeah. What do you guys think about him? Seems like something that is so outlandish, like the sawing off the leg, cutting off someone's arm, and then causing a heart attack out in the crowd. Imagine like that seems like it would well, be Well, it was movie. fingers, not a whole arm. Or whatever. <laughs> when but he was cutting off a leg, he cut off fingers, and mm -hmm. then caused a heart attack. That's like a sequence I know. you would see in a comedy movie. But imagine being able to brag you saw that. Like, did you see that show last week? Well, I did. Mm, exactly. Brag that you saw. His gallery was probably full every day because he was that like a performer. traumatizing for people though, like. Well. <laughs> you have to have a really strong stomach to like yeah. be in an OR back then. Was it always students watching or was it just in well, other doctors no, or was watch. it just people that just wanted to, I don't know. like it was there? Well, That's I mean, there question. was probably not much as far as entertainment back then. I know, then. what did they do? a depressing time. Right. right, what did they do back then? Like you're limited, so you're like, yeah. you want to go watch that doctor like cut off someone's leg? Yeah. Yeah, sure, okay. Well, yeah, I mean, people used to go and watch like hangings and stuff. So. Oh, yeah. Now, because it's entertainment. You have like nothing else to watch. Mm -hmm. Go watch that, I guess. Or you can just people watch. Crazy. You can watch people <laughs> stuff their face while they tell you weird stories. Yeah. Well, I mean about weird people in history. Okay, but these weird <laughs> stories wouldn't have happened if people were just watching other people eat. Exactly. Thank you, Doctor Liston, <laughs> <laughs> for giving me a story to tell while stuffing my face. <laughs> All right, well, <clears throat> that's it. That's yeah. a story. Dr. That's Liston. A Thank you for joining me to listen and learn about Dr. Robert Liston, AKA the fastest knife in the West. And thank you for joining me while I made this happy plate. There's always room for something sweet. So we're gonna eat our chocolate. And if there's any stories you want us to cover or talk about or any foods you want us to try because I'll eat pretty much anything, just leave us a comment and let us know. Mm. I saw that.